many Yoshis um, on Wi-Fi right now. They've been, you know, making quite a name for themselves. They've been getting a lot of dubs. Uh, and Monte, of course, um, definitely, you know, not that important of a name either. Um, you know, really, both of these players are quite prevalent on the Wi-Fi scene. Um, and immediately going to be starting off on Smashville. Tries to go through drag down bad killer setups, but not able to get any follow-up from it. Not sure if they had enough frame advantage. Well, right now, both of them <laughs> so afraid of one another's shields. Wow. Um, and honestly, you have every right to because both of these characters are, are uh, you know, they have incredible out of shield games. You know, Yoshi able to see, sort of nail and cover every single option by managing his drift. Game and Watch having a B out of shield. So they're both going to have to be so careful about how they play around that. Yeah. And that's the thing about Game and Watch. You have to respect this out of shield punish game because it's very, very strong. We've seen how this character honestly works. Mm -hmm, for sure. Ooh, and right now, uh, Monte trying to go for a couple of little mix-ups there uh, off of the platform. Love these B-reverse egg lays. Um, tries to go for the follow-up, but 800 able to actually mix up uh, the way that... Um, mix up mix up the match out of the egg. That's so important that you have to be doing that against Yoshi. Yeah. Um, also, I believe that the tags need to be uh, switched. Reversed? Okay, cool. Wanted to make sure I wasn't oh my God. sure. Oh my god, Vance. I figured out the tag. I I'm figured out why it's I'm, 800 I'm so... 135. It took me so long. Oh, no. Okay, okay. I, I, I feel I, so I'm, silly. I'm with you. I, I feel silly, too, because it, it literally you know, zoomed over my head. The, 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 the font on, uh, on, on Smash GG's page, like, wasn't able to have, like, that impact. But this font and this spacing, oh, my goodness. Man, I'm, I'm a little bit upset that I was just able to completely gloss over that. Anyways, Amante right now trying to find a way back onto the stage is able to do so. Monte needs to do a good job of just like sort of covering those high recoveries, but able to get that F tilt to finally close out that stock and cut that bleeding. Yeah. All right, well, 800 here trying to find an opportunity to get back on the stage here and punish Am Amante. 131 back at will actually be the one thing that's not actually take the stock. I'm sorry, I thought it was going to be in here. But I do like the fact yeah, that 800 still it. stays persistent, goes for the out of shield there. You know how long that lasts, and it could definitely punish Game and Watch on a lot of getups. Yeah, for sure. And right now, Amante is uh, going to be just getting comboed. Amante doing an excellent job of linking those nerves into themselves. Um, we're just trying to see something, you know, try to get started with those up airs, but not hitting the space that Monte is occupying right now. Really good choice to go for the neutral later after the four later. They were not confident that they uh, that they would be able to get any other follow up. Um, so you know, just like a good all coverage option, just to you know get a bit of more damage in. Charging the up smash, I do. I just still respect this from Monte going for up smash, just because it's not as strong as it used to be in four, where I had a little bit more armor, but it's still a really great option to punish Yoshi like so, <laughs> and then you'll be able to take the stocks. And it's one of the great tools that Game and Watch has. I honestly feel Game and Watch as a character is a very strong anti-air machine because there's a lot of things you have to respect when Game and Watch is out, out of the air, when he's going for those uppies, when he's going for those uppers, the up smashes. It's all on a 800 to really watch the landings and understand how Monte plays the character as well. For sure, these are the two characters that definitely dominate the air space a lot better. They um, have like so many tools that you just have to respect. They have incredible air speed. Definitely, uh, you know, Game Watch's air, um, air mobility is not going to be quite like Yoshi's. Could be going through the low recovery, uh, trying to space an F smash there. But Monte really recognizing that you know what, you can't really be trying to punish this right now. Down smash still being able to cover the goal, and that's going to be the order to clean it up. What a play, man. Yoshi's got that big nose and then extra long noggin with that forward air. And honestly, that's going to be pretty much to Monte's demise and to 800's victory. We're taking the first game between these two. Yeah, um, I have to say, you know, even though like the percents and uh, the stock count was quite close, it definitely did seem like Amante uh, was the one to have a lot of that tempo in that game. Uh, you know, there was never really like a point where, you know, they were the ones to be taking the socks first. They were the ones to always sort of be initiating uh, against Monte. Um, it really, really seemed like Monte, for the most part, was also struggling to be able to take out those stocks on time, especially with the first stock. And honestly, that is no easy feat. Yoshi's always like a little bit heavier than you think he is. And he has some of the most survivability in the game with, you know, a, a double jump that you just straight up cannot challenge. Yeah, a double jump armor for Yoshi just does a lot of wonders. It's one of those deals where you have to really either perfectly punish Yoshi before the second jump or punish Yoshi after the jump. And I I think if I'm not mistaken, 
there's a little animation that Yoshi makes, which is obviously he waves his arms and his feet. But if you catch the proper animation when that ends, that means he no longer has the double jump armor and you can punish him so. But even then, like there's a lot of players who just miss that timing. And then Yoshi pretty much gets to land on the stage and punish you for the end lag for the arrow that you might have gone for or the projectile. Yeah, so going into the next game, um, I'm just trying to really think about what Monte could have been doing better, but honestly, this is like such a, this is a matchup with like really, really strange pacing. I feel like both of them like sort of uh, cancel each other out and what they're looking for in a lot of ways. Uh, they're not able to land on one another's shields. Uh, they both have excellent out of shield options that just sort of keep them away. Um, and both of them sort of have the tools to be able to escape this advantage. Uh, and juggles especially. These are two really prominent juggling characters. Um, and both of them, like, just look at that, right? Uh, Amante tried to get something sort of with the falling back in, but completely unsafe on head at that point. Uh, and Monte was just able to upbeat out of there. Yeah. All right, coming in with a strong there. Good punish there coming up from Monte. Sorry, I have the names reversed again. Uh, good punish there because that when Yoshi goes for a lot of aerials, even though they have lasting hitboxes, great knockback, and Yoshi's got great movement, Yoshi does really commit to a lot of those aerials. So it's good on Monte to understand I can't punish Yoshi for such a commitment, but there is a forward air, down tilt, and almost uh, a They had the right idea, but not yeah. actually able to. Um, adjust to give and watch the drift. They waited, they waited it out, but was not able to find the punish on it either way. Really, really good retreating for leader from uh, Amante at that point, recognizing, hey, I don't really want to be challenging up Smash right now. Was able to react in time and still back off. And honestly, Yoshi's air speed and acceleration just really is able to let you do that. Yeah. Um, like, I love the little switch here just to sort of be going for a lot of uppies, uh, trying to mix up the pace. Oh, but no. Gotta do give and watch his buttons on shield, and wow, Monte taking that full stock. Yeah, and that's good too to still continuously go for Chef because it forces 800 to evaluate an option. If I stay on the ledge, the invincibility will run out. I will get hit by one of those projectiles. Do I want to commit to a jump? Do I want to commit to a shield where I can probably get punished? And Monte was definitely understanding that and just read the roll. So far though, 800 yeah. trying to lead in with one of the eggs, trying to get an opportunity, gets the grab, no forward throw. What a good mash out from Monte. Yeah, definitely getting a little bit too greedy with some of those pummels, but um, I have to say it's just like so difficult to just like, get a hit on either of these players. It seems like both of them are swinging, but that time actually able to catch the dash and Amante finally cleaning it up without taking too much damage. Going to be still sticking that 72% and honestly, uh, unless Monte is able to find something like a down smash, Yoshi's still going to be living for a while. Yeah. We oh, love just... the use of the egg though, just to sort of give themselves a bit of an opening. Amante really respecting that up smash, which is exactly what you have to be doing. That move is so big, it is, you know, <laughs> it's so difficult to contest. Yeah. It's, and it's also good for 800 to keep using the egg too, because when you want to come back on stage, you want your opponent to have to evaluate something, whether it's having to hold shield against the egg or having to get hit by egg or move away. Things like that give Yoshi a little bit of an edge when he tries to land on the stage. So uh, Monte at this point has really conditioned a lot of a Monte shield with those up smashes. Um, I would like to see some sort of a capitalization or a mix up at this point, trying to maybe go through a couple of more grabs, trying to maybe try to go through like more uh, dash attacks and baits. But, you know, finally that up smash actually still being able to connect. But you know what? Monte wasn't punished for it at all. They were able just to keep swinging, kept rolling the dice and finally connecting it. So uh, props to them. Yeah. Up you had a shield, neutral air. I was going to say, yeah, if 800 is going to use that double jump armor, he's got to use it now to get out of the juggles. Yeah, Forward air, exactly wow, it. even stopping the bomb, too. Ooh, right now, I just have to say, Monty's doing an excellent job of just perpetuating this advantage state. Not actually able to nail it through the forward air. That's a little bit um, uncomfortable, but... Monte had the exact right idea. That's exactly what they needed to be doing. Mm. Just a little bit off on the timing. And I loved that um, option to go through the down B there. Um, you know, still being able to go past shield, able to still hit through the uh, up smash. It was an excellent choice. Yeah, and it's a good way to punish the way that Monte wow. has been setting up for a lot of these up smashes. But you see why Monte goes for it. You know how Yoshi's aerial drift is. And if you can punish Yoshi for trying to excessively land on you that way, then you will definitely see yourself in the victory screen with, the, you know, the up smash that... Monte had been putting out there consistently. Yeah, I feel like every single stock that came was actually being taken out by up smash. So if that's the case, <laughs> agreed, then you know agreed. that's like a huge call out. Like, hey, if I keep dying, you know, the same exact way, then I need to be able to mix up my landings a little bit more. I need to be able to bait it out. Um, maybe not even punish it. You know, you can't always try to be punishing something. Some things you just have to respect um, at a certain position. But 
Yeah, no, Amante uh, always just needs to look out for that option. So going into the next game, um, going onto the of platforms is going to be huge because that sort of gives uh, Amante the opening that they need uh, to be able to land a little bit safely against Game & Watch, right? Because if you land on a flat stage, uh, it's easier to catch it, catch it with an up smash. Game & Watch's up smash not going to be reaching the, the platforms on uh, something like Battlefield, the like Pokemon Stadium too. But this time they're going to be opting to go for Smashville. Um, and yeah, you know, unless Game & Watch himself does end up committing to the plat, he's not going to be able to find those up smashes as easily. Yeah, and that's really good for 800 to evaluate those options when you're trying to land against Game & Watch. Platforms do add a different dynamic against the character, and specifically that is going to be something seen in Smashville's static center platform there. But we'll see no forward and not even reaching through the ledge. We know how it actually works too, because it is able to hit through ledge, but Monte will come in, coming back. There's an egg lay. I'm seeing those mix-ups, yeah? The, the egg lay is doing an excellent job of catching whatever option a Monte, oh, excuse me, Monte is going for in that moment, uh, just able to mix up his mobility, make himself as ambiguous as possible. That time does go for it. Miss spaces it though, uh, gonna be drifting a little bit too much inwards and we just haven't, I was about to say we haven't even game, but cleans it up with an F smash. Yeah, immediately 800 takes a little bit of control and like you said, a dram guard, Having the stage it was working out really good weather for 800. Not having to worry about getting hit by up smash, but also having a safe platform to secure the landing and even stop the downer there with an up with an up air. Yoshi's tail has got such a disjoint. Yeah, for sure. Yoshi, I mean, you know, Yoshi is definitely one of the most profound jugglers in this game. Mixing up the landing there, you know, of course, Yoshi's down B is capable of going through platforms. So whenever Yoshi does that, it's a bit of like an unreactable mix. You just have to find a way to be able to cover both uh, high and low simultaneously. Yeah. And while finding the up air into the up B, not able to connect, uh, connect the down air there. Um, loved its weight. That weight from Amante was mm -hmm. impeccable. That spacing was impeccable. Uh, they waited out all of those options. They waited for the right moment to strike and they hit it. But that time, though, a little bit too close to Game & Watch. Not compensating for the drift. Yeah, and speaking of... <laughs> in pay, uh, I'm sorry, I just lost that words because I saw the down air and that pretty much took out 800 stock. So 800 doing a pretty good job just trying to hold on to the ledge, but this is going to give Monte sensing those air, those moves and able to come in with neutral air and take back center stage and also just get a, get a little bit of a corner carry. Good stuff on Monte to just recognize yeah. the way 800 was trying to edge guard that way. Monte's quality pressure was excellent. The option coverage was impeccable as well. They were just able to cover high and low simultaneously and reposition himself to be able to reset the situation each time. Right now, Amante landing on uh, landing from the Smashville platforms again, making so much use out of B reverse egg lay. I would like to see Monte try to bait it out, try to punish it a little bit because um, if you're getting hit by that that often, it usually means you're just committing uh, to shield a lot. Wow, that up smash is going to be beating out Montes in the startup. Uh, and with a really, really convincing third game, Amante takes it 2-1 over Amante. Crazy. Damn, I never want to say so, ma so many Antes in, in, in one <laughs> thing again. That was, that was painful. I was going to say the same. Like, you handled it better than I.